Uh, worked for the Department of Defense, Central Intelligence Agency, National Security Agency, Office of Naval Intelligence, Defense Language Institute, and DARPA, and Interpol, and FBI. I classified above top secret, that's all I can speak of now. Every job I was part of, every project, had a different level of clearance depending on the application. I, I suspect that the reason I was hired to work with the intelligence community was that my education background seemed relevant, it was applicable. Um, basically studying medicine. Uh, and the effects of energy on the human body was what everybody seemed to be looking for back in those days. Uh, from the, from the get-go, when all this began many decades ago, I had assigned national security oaths with all the different organizations and groups, and uh, as such, I was not allowed to retain physical copies of anything. Most of it stored in my own brain, but I do remember what I did, where I did, with whom I did, what the specific information was, names I can't speak of, and specific dates I can't speak of. If my identity was disclosed to the public, I could face incarceration and heavy fines, because it'd be considered a form of treason. In working with intelligence groups, um, you keep friends with some of the people at them, and you know so they, they, get, they loosen up because they know you're not going to divulge this to the public. You sign security oath because you could face tremendous legal, financial, and, and get trouble. The fact that this information goes back to very likely before World War II, that governments knew about it. They may not have known everything, but they knew a lot about it. That in the theaters of war, primarily in the European theater of World War II, the stuff the Foo Fighters were being sent all see all over the place. Other things that are from Roswell. But what's amazing is the great amount of disinformation put forth by our own government and most other world governments, and you ask yourself why. And I think it's pretty obvious that it would tend to diminish the significance of who we are in terms of our government, how we respond to our government, and if they can't intervene to protect us from these things, which apparently they cannot, then why do we pay homage to the current government? It's a, it's a very uncomfortable feeling. It's sort of like, and if you learn that this is the most secret information that's ever faced humanity, and they're, and they're not telling us because of control, then so what if it was disclosed that we have been dealing with these, these things for beings for decades, that we made a deal with them, hypothetically. The deal was they give them access to us, they conduct their experiments, and we look the other way. What if that were true? Well, that would have a big impact. When you go vote, have a big impact. When you write your check every April 15th, it would leave us as a disenfranchised culture. The most compelling evidence given to me, shown to me, was autopsy reports from various medical examiners to the military of recovered alien bodies. And while they were humanoid in nature, they were not human. Their internal organs were different than ours. They had no reproductive systems. And this information was very well discussed and printed by Leonard, the late Leonard Shrinkfield in Crash Retrievals. He had several monographs and a, I think well, several books focused on it. This was known quite well by parts of the intelligence community. The way this is all handled is compartmentalized. So everyone has what they need to know and they don't have enough to integrate everything to the point where they can disclose it to the public.